Welcome back to our journey through television history. Today we're diving into the classic sitcom, That's My Mama, which graced our screens from 1974 to 1975. But as we pay tribute to this iconic show, we also want to remember the talented actors who left us too soon. This is That's My Mama 1974 to 1975, Actor Who Died. Before we begin, Make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our nostalgic explorations of the golden age of television. Now, let's take a stroll down memory lane. Created by Dan T. Bradley and starring the charismatic Clifton Davis, That's My Mama brought laughter and joy to households in the mid-70s. The show centered around the hilarious escapades of barbershop owner Clifton Curtis and his eclectic group of friends and family. The cast was a dynamic ensemble featuring Teresa Merritt, Ted Lang, and the talented Lynn Moody. But as time passes, we find ourselves reflecting on those who enriched our lives with their performances and are no longer with us. Teresa Merritt. Teresa Merritt acclaimed for her role as Eloise Mama. Curtis, in the sitcom, passed away from skin cancer on June 12, 1998, in the borough of the Bronx, New York City. Hailing from Emporia, Virginia, Merritt made her mark in numerous theatrical productions before achieving fame later in life. Renowned for her portrayal of Ma Rainey in Mayor Rainey's Black Bottom, a performance that earned her a Tony Award nomination, and her role as Eveline in The Wiz, where she succeeded Mabel King. Merritt departed The Wiz, citing the adverse impact of the role on her vocal cords. Among Merritt's notable Broadway credits were Mule Bone, 1991, Division Street, 1980, Don't Play Us Cheap, 1972, The Crucible, 1972, Trumpets of the Lord, 1969, Golden Boy, 1964, Tambourines to Glory, 1963, and Carmen Jones, 1943-1945, 1947. She also toured with road productions of Funny Girl, Showboat, and South Pacific. In the realm of film, Merritt delivered memorable performances as Aunt M in the 1978 film Adaptation of The Wiz, Mrs. Crosby in the 1977 film version of Neil Simon's The Goodbye Girl, and Juanita in the Adam Sandler comedy Billy Madison. Additionally, she shared the screen with Burt Reynolds and Dolly Parton, in the film adaptation of The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Merritt was wed to Benjamin Hines, and the couple was blessed with four children. During the 34th National Convention of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority in 1977, Merritt, alongside E. Fanny Granton of Jet Magazine, was granted honorary membership, Theodore Wilson. Theodore Wilson gained prominence for his recurring portrayals, notably as Earl the Postman on the ABC sitcom That's My Mama. In 1980, Wilson entered matrimony with actress Joan Pringle, and the duo welcomed two children into their lives. Tragically, on July 21, 1991, Wilson succumbed to a stroke at the age of 47 in Los Angeles, California. Hailing from New York City, Teddy initiated his acting journey in the black exploitation film Cotton Comes to Harlem, sharing the screen with Red Fox, the star of the Sanford and Son series. Subsequently, he featured in several black exploitation films of that era. His versatile talent also found expression in the 1970s sitcom What's Happening, where he assumed various characters, including the noteworthy role of Al Dunbar in a popular two-part episode. In a memorable twist, Wilson's character faced arrest for bootlegging a Doobie Brothers concert in the show's conclusion. In 1977, Wilson headlined the short-lived sitcom The Sanford Arms, a spin-off of Sanford and Son. Post its cancellation, he made guest appearances on The White Shadow, even penning a 1980 episode, Enos Gimme a Break, The Golden Girls, and what's happening now. By 1986, he secured a recurring role in another short-lived series, The Red Fox Show. Wilson's career continued its momentum throughout the late 1980s and 1990s, gracing screens in Alien Nation, CBS TV's Dallas, ABC TV's Family Matters, Tales from the Crypt, Gabriel's Fire, 
Mama's Family, and NBC TV's Quantum Leap. His film credits included The Hunter, 1980, Blake Edwards' A Fine Mess, 1986, and That's Life, 1986. Wilson made his final on-screen appearance in Blood in Blood Out, a 1993 crime drama series posthumously released after his passing. Jester Hairston. Jester Hairston assumed the character of Wildcat in the series That's My Mama. On January 18, 2000, Hairston passed away in Los Angeles due to natural causes. Born in Belews Creek, situated on the border of Stokes, Forsyth, Rockingham, and Guilford counties in North Carolina, Hairston's roots were in a rural community where his grandparents had experienced slavery. During his early years, he relocated with his family to Homestead, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh, achieving his high school graduation in 1919. Forgoing studies at Massachusetts Agriculture College in the 1920s, Hairston graduated cum laude from Tufts University in 1928 and pursued music education at the Juilliard School. Initially, he worked as a choir conductor, transitioning into singing and acting in plays, films, radio programs, and television shows through his Broadway choir collaborations. Notably, in 1937, he played a pivotal role in founding the Screen Actors Guild. Hairstone penned the song Mary's Boy Child in 1956, a distinctive contribution to the realm of popular Christmas songs by an African American. Additionally, he composed the song Amen, which he voiced for the Sidney Poitier film Lilies of the Field, 1963, and arranged traditional Negro spirituals. His cinematic endeavors primarily revolved around composing, arranging, and choral conducting. With a filmography encompassing over 20 films, Hairston often secured small roles, some uncredited, in productions like the early Tarzan movies, St. Louis Blues, 1958, The Alamo, 1960, To Kill a Mockingbird, 1962, In the Heat of the Night, 1967, Lady Sings the Blues, 1972, I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, 1988, and Being John Malkovich, 1999. In his later years, Hairston assumed the role of a cultural ambassador for American music, traversing numerous countries alongside the choral groups he curated. In 1985, he led the Jester Hairston Chorale, a multiracial ensemble, to perform in the People's Republic of China, marking a notable cultural exchange during a time when foreign visitors were scarce in the country. DeForest Coven DeForest Coven portrayed the character of Josh in the sitcom. DeForest passed away in Los Angeles, a day prior to his 90th birthday on September 8, 2007. Originating the Uncle Woodrow character, DeForest Coven made his debut in the Sanford and Son episode titled Members of the Engagement the Wedding, Season 3, Episode 9, in 1973, subsequently replaced by Raymond Allen. As a venerable actor, dancer, and former performer in black vaudeville de Forest, hailing from Chicago, enjoyed a career spanning eight decades. His initial foray into film occurred in the Al Jolson dance musical film titled The Singing Kid, 1936, marking an uncredited appearance as a dancer. Over the ensuing two decades, he featured in numerous productions, such as Every Day's a Holiday, 1937, Too Hot to Handle, 1938, Going Places, 1938, New Moon, 1940, Take My Life, 1942, No Time for Romancy, 1948, and the highly successful film Carmen Jones, 1954, starring Harry Belafonte and Dorothy Dandridge. Following a prolonged hiatus from film, DeForest embarked on a series of guest and or supporting roles on TV and film during the 1970s. Noteworthy appearances include his portrayal of Woodrow on Sanford and Son, the short-lived CBS TV series Apple's Way, 1974, his supporting role as Josh on the ABC TV sitcom series That's My Mama, 1975, and guest roles on the CBS TV sitcom Good Times, 1976, NBC TV's Police Story, 1976, and CBS's Kojak, 1977.
Additionally, he secured small parts in high-grossing films such as The Day of the Locust, 1975, the Academy Award-winning film Rocky, 1976, and Beneath the Valley of the Ultra Vixens, 1979. In his later years, DeForest continued his on-screen presence with appearances in the films Body and Soul, 1983, The Night Before, 1988, and To Sleep with Anger, 1990. He also made numerous guest appearances on shows such as Fox TV's Martin, 1993, and NYPD Blue, 1993. Liesl Wilson Liesl Wilson, renowned for his portrayal of Leonard Taylor on the ABC sitcom That's My Mama, which aired from 1974 to 1975, was born to Liesl Wilson, Sr., and Cecile Ross Wilson. On March 14, 2010, Liesl Wilson passed away, succumbing to a reported brain tumor. Rep His cinematic endeavors included roles in Brian De Palma's horror film Sisters, 1972, and The Incredible Melting Man, 1977. He gained widespread recognition for guest appearances on television shows like Lou Grant, The White Shadow, and Falcon Crest, among others. Beyond acting, Liesel served as the director of the American Academy of Dramatic Arts West in Pasadena, California, for several years. Upon concluding his regular acting career in 1992, Liesel transitioned to education, imparting vocal techniques to aspiring broadcasters at the Academy of Radio and Television Broadcasting in Huntington Beach, California. Liesel Wilson, Sr., and Cecile Ross. Wilson were his parents. Helen Martin. Helen Martin portrayed Laura in the television show. Martin passed away from a heart attack on March 25, 2000, in Monterey, California, at the age of 90. Born in St. Louis and raised in Nashville, Tennessee, she was the only child in a family of musicians. Martin's parents aspired for her to become a concert pianist. Following their wishes, she attended Fisk University for two years before leaving to pursue an acting career. During the Great Depression, Martin sustained herself by working as a domestic worker. Martin graced a dozen Broadway productions, including Jean Genet's The Blacks, The Musical Raisin from 1973 to 1975, O.C. Davis's Pearly Victorious, and later the musical version, titled Pearly, The Aim and Corner, and Tennessee Williams's period of adjustment. Later in life, Martin gained widespread recognition for her roles in popular television series, amassing a sizable audience. She had a recurring part as Wanda Weeping Wanda on the television series Good Times and later portrayed the neighbor Pearl Shea on the television sitcom 227, which aired from 1985 to 1990. Martin also had a role in the short-lived sitcoms Baby, I'm Back. During an appearance on Late Night with Conan O'Brien to discuss Don't Be a Menace, Martin electrified host Conan O'Brien and the audience with her responses. When asked about being cast as a pot-smoking grandmother in the film, she exclaimed, I love the reefer, and humorously declared that she would have been a stripper if not for her acting career, concluding her statement with a playful dance. Gordon Jump Gordon Jump assumes the character of Officer O'Reilly in the sitcom. Gordon Jump, renowned for his portrayal of a perplexed radio station manager on the TV series WKRP in Cincinnati and gaining fame as the solitary Maytag repairman in commercials, passed away on September 22, 2003, at the age of 71. Suffering from pulmonary fibrosis, as disclosed by his cousin Catherine Jump Wagner, the ailment results in scarring of the lung's air sacs, leading to potential heart or respiratory failure. Jump was a familiar figure to Utah audiences, contributing to local theater and participating in productions by Utah-based Bonneville International. In 1998, he co-hosted the inaugural Pearl Awards, recognizing popular music associated with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Having embraced the LDS Church early in his acting journey, Jump encountered Ruth and Nathan Hale during his stint at a Glendale Khalifdazi theater run by the Utah couple.
Wagner, residing in Arcanum, Ohio, received the news of her cousin's passing from her father, also named Gordon Jump. According to her, her cousin was under hospice care at his residence southeast of Los Angeles. Jump portrayed Arthur Carlson in WKRP in Cincinnati, airing on CBS from 1978 to 1982 and featuring Gary Sandy, Lonnie Anderson, Tim Reed, Howard Hesseman, and Richard Sanders as the eclectic crew of the radio station. A native of Dayton, Ohio, Jump embarked on his career at radio and TV stations in the Midwest. He held roles both behind the microphone and the camera, serving as a producer for stations in Kansas and Ohio. From 1989 until his retirement in July, Jump embodied the Maytag repairman Old Lonely, an iconic advertising figure, before another actor assumed the role. Ralph Hake, chairman and CEO of Maytag Corp., paid tribute, stating, Gordon was an incredibly talented actor and a remarkable human being. Jump is survived by his wife, four daughters, a son, and a brother, as conveyed in Maytag's official statement. Bernie Hamilton. Bernie Hamilton takes on the role of Jake in the TV series. Hamilton passed away on December 30, 2008, due to cardiac arrest at the age of 80. The U.S. television series Starsky and Hutch, a relic of 1970s pop culture, is remembered for its cop heroes sporting blow-dried hair, polyester jackets, and a vibrant red Gran Torino, affectionately known as the Striped Tomato. It is also recognized as the first police series where the station boss was an African-American, portrayed skillfully by Bernie Hamilton, who passed away at the age of 80. The significance of casting the portly Hamilton was that Captain Harold Doby was an authoritative figure, not confined by any stereotypes. For 67 episodes, spanning from 1975 to 1979, he kept the two carefree policemen, David Starsky, played by the short, dark Paul Michael Glazer, and Kenneth Hutch Hutchinson, played by the tall, blonde David Soule, and the show on an even keel. In 1971, Hamilton had the opportunity to portray a detective lieutenant in the organization, 1971, a rival to Sidney Poitier's detective lieutenant Virgil Tibbs in the last and weakest of three films featuring the super sleuth. It served as a precursor to his role as Captain Dobe. Richard Ward initially played Dobe in the pilot episode of Star Sky and Hutch, but producers Aaron Spelling and Leonard Goldberg brought Hamilton in from an unsold pilot for a detective series titled Stone. Hamilton made only a handful of television appearances after Star Sky and Hutch, and in 1985, he retired from acting to focus on managing a nightclub art gallery named Citadel de Aiti on Sunset Boulevard. In the early 1980s, he founded a record label called Chocolate Snowman, specializing in R&B and gospel music albums. He even performed one of its releases, Captain Dobe Sings the Blues. Hamilton, who was divorced, is survived by a son and a daughter, Ray Vite. Ray Vite portrayed Freddie Hampton in the TV show. The performer Raymond Anthony Vite, a co-star of the recently terminated ABC TV series The Quest, passed away in the rear of a patrol car on February 20th, 1983, following a confrontation with the police, as authorities revealed today. The police had responded to complaints of a man shouting and chanting all day at Mr. Vitt's Studio City apartment shortly before 11 p.m., stated Lute. Charles Higby. He mentioned that Mr. Vitt, 33 years old, instructed the officers to leave and placed a curse on them. The actor allegedly lunged at two officers twice, and in response, they struck Mr. Vite with their nightsticks and sprayed him with tear gas with no apparent effect, according to Lieutenant Higby. He added that Mr. Vite then ran towards an outdoor swimming pool, but fell on the concrete. Lieutenant Higby reported that the actor, screaming, was transported to a patrol car with the intention of taking him to a hospital for mental evaluation. However, once in the car, Mr. Vite ceased breathing, he stated. The cause of death is under investigation, as mentioned by a coroner's investigator.
Mr. Vitt had roles in films such as Thank God It's Friday, Car Wash, Grambling White Tigers, and Heartbeat. The show The Quest premiered this season and was canceled after a few episodes. Hey everyone, we've reached the end of today's journey and what a ride it has been. Before we wrap up, I want to take a moment to reflect on the incredible memories we've shared and express my gratitude for your unwavering support. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for being part of this community. Your likes, comments, and shares mean the world to me, and they inspire me to keep creating content that resonates with you. All right, my friends, it's time to wrap up this chapter. Thank you once again for being part of this incredible community. Here's to more adventures, more discoveries, and more shared moments. Until next time, take care, stay curious, and keep spreading those positive vibes. See you in the next video.